Today we're going to walk through a 2025 Ventana 4369. We're going to start with the equalizer panel. This is your leveling panel for your equalizer jacks. First of all, you'll need to turn your key on and power the pad on with the power button. And once you're ready to lower your jacks and level your coach, um, few things that you need to make sure you do before beforehand is um, run your slide outs out before you level uh, while you're on airbags and then do a good walk around on your coach to make sure there's nothing uh, in the way nothing underneath uh, where the jack pads would come down and and hit it once you've done that just come in and hit auto level your jacks will um, go down these red flashing lights uh, basically mean that those jacks are uh, down or in motion. You can fill the coach as the jacks start planting. Once uh, the jacks are completely down, uh, you'll get your audible beep that it's done. And um, you can shut your ignition key off at that point. And you can power the system down. Uh, the jacks will remain extended uh, for the length of your stay. When you're <clears throat> done camping and you want to retract your jacks. Uh, the process would be to start your engine. This allows the air to start building up in the system. And then you would hit the all retract. As your jacks go up, it also gives a signal uh, for the airbags to inflate. That's why starting your coach uh, starts providing that uh, that needed air pressure to lift your coach up on airbags. <clears throat> Once the jacks have completely retract, all the lights will be out and you'll get the audible beep that it's done. Um, there are a couple of warning lights here, low voltage and excess slope, uh, and engage park brake. Um, low voltage and the park brake not being engaged will not allow the system to work. You'll have to take care of either one of those two issues before it will work. Uh, excess slope would be uh, if you were in a camping spot that was so unlevel that the jacks didn't have enough extension to level the coach out. <clears throat> At that point, uh, you would either just live with uh, how level it could get you or move to a, another location that you could re-level and uh, get, get the coach uh, good and level. Once you're ready to travel, this is up. Your, your uh, <clears throat> airbags are inflated. This would be when you would want to run your slide out rooms back in and then go around and make a visual check. Go around and make a visual check that your jacks are actually fully retracted and that there's no limbs or debris on your slide out awnings or toppers. Uh, 
and uh, nothing's in the way of your slide out rooms retracting. Uh, and then you'd go ahead and retract your slide out rooms. In front of your equalizer pad, uh, there's a bank of switches here. We'll just cover each one of them. Tag dump, auto, disable, and manual. Uh, disable would be in the middle and manual would be uh, the momentary contact switch at the back. Tag dump auto would be forward. That means if you put the coach in reverse, it will automatically dump the tag axle. If you want to do it manually, you're in a tight spot and you want to turn a little easier uh, or back up a little easier, you can push this to manual on that position it's a momentary contact so as soon as you let go of that switch it will reinflate the airbags engine brake on and off so once you turn it on the next switch engine brake high medium and low uh, allows you to select how much engine brake pressure you uh, get from the engine to slow the coach down. ATC override. So in the normal, the normal position, ATC is activated. That's your automatic traction control. If you get in a slippery spot uh, and you need both wheels to spin, you can override this and um, you can uh, get some wheel spin. Uh, this is also covered in your chassis uh, owner manual. Uh, all the ins and outs of how fast you can be going and that type of stuff. The house battery and chassis battery boost. So this switch will allow you to boost off of the house batteries or off of the chassis batteries, um, depending on which bank would be low. Uh, whichever one you want to boost, you can hold it that way and uh, hold it for approximately 60 seconds or so, and then uh, attempt to start your engine or uh, get your generator started. Uh, air horn. This air horn switch allows you to select uh, as a standard you'll get when you press the the horn button in the center you'll get the street horn and if you select air horn you'll get both the air horn and the street horn together in front of that you have your allison transmission touchpad so um to actually put it in gear and go somewhere, you have your engine running, you release your park brake with your foot on the service brake, and then you press R for reverse, N for neutral, and D for drive. There are There is a mode button here, so you can choose between economy, uh, or you can view what what gear you're set in. Um, this is uh, you're selected to be in all six gears and you're in uh, gear number one at the moment. That would change as you uh, go faster. Once the transmission is warm uh, you can use these two buttons here press them simultaneously with the coach in neutral and the park brake set and you'll get a message here it says oil temp is too low right now so once the oil temp was warm enough you would actually get a readout here it would say like ol okay or ol minus or plus and how many quarts. 
Um, you can also use these buttons uh, to manually uh, downshift uh, the transmission into a lower gear. Okay, moving on up here to the, <clears throat> you have a cup holder and then down below right here is a USB and a three and a half millimeter jack. Right here is a green cap. That's a diagnostic plug for the engine. Right beside that is a foot pedal. Pressing that foot pedal releases the steering wheel to tilt or telescope. Once you get it in the position you like, you release the pedal and it locks into place. Moving up here to this panel. Uh, so this is your mirror control for your exterior mirrors on the front of the coach. In the center is off to the left. Will allow you to adjust the left mirror up, down, right, or left. Same with pushing it to the right. It will allow you to use this pad here and move the mirror up, down, left, or right. You should right. leave this switch in the off position so that nothing will inadvertently move your mirrors once you have them set like you like them. Right above that, you have a red switch. That is for mirror heat. So if your mirrors are icy or deep frosted, um, you can turn the mirror heat on. Okay, right above that, we have the headlight switch. So in the first position would be marker lights. The second position would be marker and headlights. The next switch over is bright and dim. That controls the intensity of the lighting on these switches here. Um, <clears throat> this would be your fog light switch right here. This would be the dome light right above the driver. And then this resume cancel uh, auto high beams uh, works with the collision mitigation system and uh, if you have it in the resume position it will be auto high beams they'll kick on and off um, by themselves if you don't want auto high beams to work just push it down on to cancel okay right right here this bucket right here is a um, phone charger you can just set your phone in the bucket and it'll start charging uh, based on your particular phone and your phone case uh, some cases are not compatible and you may have to find the sweet spot for your phone with that charger but as long as the uh, disconnect switch is on, the charger is active. All right, moving over to the steering wheel. <clears throat> I don't know how. So on the stock here on the left. You have your on off resume accelerate for your cruise control. Uh, the set button is in the very end of the stock. So if you have the coach running and you turn it on and you hit set,
can go into fast idle with it. You can turn it off. Um, and then it works the same way once you're driving. So, left, right turn signal, left turn signal, hazards are the silver switch right behind there. Uh, you just pull out on that. That will activate your hazard lights. To disengage your hazard lights, just turn the turn signal to either direction and it will release that hazard. Uh, right down here on the side of the steering column, down about three quarters of the way down, is a small switch. That switch is for putting your Trimark system into program mode. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, in the center here we have our glass dash. Starting at the top left we have fuel, then our engine coolant temperature, then our engine oil uh, pressure. Uh, right in the center the two yellow lines, those are our mobile eye um, indicators and you'll get messages there as you uh, are traveling there for lane change uh, information and uh, pedestrian uh, traffic or other vehicles that you're approaching. Uh, to the side of that, you have the two air tanks, uh, front and rear tanks. Then next to that, you have your DEF uh, gauge. Dropping down to the lower section on the left, you have your RPM uh, gauge there. You have your uh, fog light indicator here, your headlight indicator next to it there, that I just turned it off. Um, moving over, well actually in that same gauge, you also have your odometer uh, and your transmission indicator, reverse, neutral, or drive. Also gives you your trip information. Here in the center, these gauges <coughs> or message areas are controllable, controllable by the user. You can hit the home screen, which will take you to that menu then you can use the up and down arrows to choose between brightness, messages, settings, trip, info, tire pressure monitoring system, and adaptive cruise control. Um, <clears throat> once you get into those, to the area that you want, you'd press OK. We'll do it here on brightness just as an example. So you press OK, then it gives you uh, the instructions there to adjust, use the up or down arrows. So you can dim the dash down if it's too bright for you, or you can make it brighter. Um, just a personal preference setting. And then once you're done, you can hit OK, go back to the menu, and go down and select uh, another area. 
So if you do info and you hit OK, then you can scroll through uh, other options to see there, like engine load, the boost pressure, transmission temperature, engine torque, exhaust temperature, accelerator position, engine load, those type of informations. <clears throat> you can go down to your tire pressure monitoring system. You can pull that up. You can see all the tire pressures for each tire, front, rear drive, and rear tag axle. Just below that, <clears throat> right now it says no CMS. That means no collision mitigation system. Um, once you get driving above a certain speed, that will come on. And um, <clears throat> you can refer to the owner's, the Spartan owner manual for more information on the collision mitigation system installed in this coach. Over to the right, we have our uh, miles per hour uh, and that's one of them that you can go into settings and change it to kilometers uh, per hour if you're uh, in Canada. Uh, inside that one you also have the park brake indicator so anytime the park brakes on and your keys on you'll get that indicator. <laughs> All right, so we've we've covered this portion of the steering wheel. Right underneath that pod, we have two switches to the side here. The the top one is for your comfort drive. It pops up right there in the center of your screen. And so basically this adjusts the amount of force that you need to put on your steering wheel to be able to turn your coach. That's a personal preference setting. You adjust it to how you like it. The next switch underneath that one on the side of that pod adjust the pedals. In Down is in towards the firewall and if you pull it up it brings them out towards the driver. <clears throat> the center pod here. These two switches here. This one is headlight flash and this one is marker light flash. Um, they're, they're used to flash uh, oncoming traffic or uh, when you pass a uh, uh, a semi or other vehicle and you want to give them a thank you or you want to let them know that they have enough room to get in you can flash these <clears throat> if they're if the lights are already on it will momentarily turn them off and when you let go it, they will come back on if the headlights or marker lights are not on it will temporarily give them power to flash on. When you let go, they'll turn back off. All right, here, these other buttons here, all in the center and the uh, <clears throat> forward rewind buttons are all connected to the Excite radio so that you can select your source, adjust your volume, and uh, do uh, previous and next uh, tracks as well as uh, player pause. And then the button right in the center is the mute button. So it's easy 
for you to mute the whatever's coming out of the radio uh, right here without reaching over and looking at the screen. <clears throat> On this pod here, we have the green answer and the red hang up icons here. Uh, those work in conjunction with your telephone, your cell phone, if you have it Bluetooth to the uh, dash radio. Below that, you have your washer, your wiper washer controls. So you have high and low with this switch. You can turn the wipers on at constant speed with the high low button off obviously turns them off press this one here to wash the windshield and then this one would be the delay the way the delay setting works is you press it once you wait for the amount of time that you want it to wipe again you press it again and that will set the time of your delay so if you wanted a fast delay, you would push it, wait like a half a second, and push it again, and that would have a one second delay. You want a long delay like 20 seconds, it's just barely misting out, you'd press it once, wait 20 seconds, press it again, then you would have a 20 second delay. Once again, anytime you want to turn it off, just hit the off button. So down here we have the ignition switch, insert your key, first position, turns on the accessory mode, turns on your glass dash, and the second position is a momentary, starts the coach, you can turn it off. and. The off position will allow you to remove the key. Next to that, you have your park brake. So <clears throat> anytime you park the coach, you want to put the transmission in neutral and pull this out. That will uh, set the park brake so the coach won't move. When you get ready to travel, you would start your coach put your foot on the service brake, press this park brakes uh, lever in to release the park brakes, and then put your transmission in gear. Up here, you have a split screen uh, Excite radio and camera monitor. So over here you have your menu, all the things that you can uh, do here with the system. Um, you'll notice that like iPod is grayed out and you wouldn't be able to get anything on auxiliary either unless you are plugged in over here to the auxiliary inputs on the side. Once it recognized that there was an iPod there that would, or a uh, iPhone that would not be grayed out. The Navi button. Uh, so the Navi, you can either go to Menu or you can use the shortcut button here to Navi. They'll, they'll both take you to the same place. Once you get there, you have to accept the conditions. Then your navigation screen will pop up. You can go to your settings over here and set up your route. Media Center <clears throat> allows you to store files. 
uh, music tracks on onto the your uh, Excite radio, and there's a few of them that come preloaded from um, the factory, and you can delete those or add more. Um, just see the information in your owner manual or on Noogle for more information on uh, the Excite radio. Sirius XM can <clears throat> it's Sirius XM ready. You do need to purchase a sub subscription for X Sirius XM if you want to have that in your coach. It will allow you to do the preview channel, but that's about it. Bluetooth allows you to connect your phone or other device to the radio and so the Bluetooth ID shows up here. So you'd hit this button here and it would show you what's been paired and if you want to pair a new one, go in there and then your phone will appear here as well. If you want to erase phones that have been uh, stored in there previously, you can just hit the X once you're in there and that will erase that device out of out of the stored menu. HDMI and auxiliary, those both, if you have something plugged in, uh, you can get that to show up on the screen as well. An important one here, camera control. So camera control screen allows you to view any of the three standard cameras or the 360 camera system. So right now we're looking in reverse. So that is the same as what we're already on. We can also look, look down the left or right hand side of the coach via the turn signal um, cameras. Uh, when we do have the coach on and running and you put your uh, left or right turn signal on, it will automatically go over to that turn signal so you can see the side of the coach whichever way you're turning. For the 360 camera selection, it will allow you to go in and see a variety of uh, different uh, selections here. You use this 360 camera select switch in conjunction with that. And as you go through this, it will toggle through the menu uh, for the different um, available camera selections and it displays them here as you toggle through them. Okay. Mobile eye if you wish to um, if you wish to see the mobile eye system on this screen as well as in the center of your dash um, you can do that as well. Um, and that's kind of how it will look. You'll get your other uh, warnings as you're driving uh, on this screen, as well as in the center of the dash. Your setup menu allows you to go up and set up the system uh, to the preferences you like uh, whether it be audio or video. <clears throat> so, right here you have house mode. And if you want to listen 
to your whatever you're playing on your dash radio outside in the entertainment center you would come in here and select house mode and that would pipe whatever you have playing on the radio here to your exterior TV uh, the at least the Bose speaker on your exterior TV there is a selector switch out there that you'll also have to turn on. We'll cover that later when we're outside. So that pretty much gives you an idea of the Excite radio system. And if you want to turn it off, you can just press the button and turn it off. You can turn that one camera side off as well. Below that, we have visor and shade. These are the power visors and shades for the front windshield. These will put the visor or the shade all the way down to the dash if you have the key in the off position. If the key is on, turned on or the coach is running, they will only come down about halfway. So those are your front visor and shade controls. Overhead fans, when your ignition key is on, they're powered up so you can turn them on and off. And then you, the switch right next to it is high, medium, and low. Allows you to select the speed of the fan. That fan helps defrost and defog the front windshield. Generator, uh, right now we have it on. We can hit stop and release the button. It will stop the generator. To start the generator, we would press and hold it. Once it's warmed up, uh, preheated, it will start. Uh, when it's cold out, it won't start that fast. It will it will flash for sometimes a minute or so before it uh, starts the generator. Then the switch here, front fan, high, off, and low. This is for the Oasis uh, convector down here below the dash for it blowing out heat. Entrance lock just uh, locks and unlocks the entrance door. And then we already covered the three ca 360 camera select button. Beside that, we have our dash heat and AC controls. These are very, very similar to what you would have in your automobile. Um, <clears throat> fan speed here from off to four, your recirculating mode, and uh, your air conditioner mode. Uh, this one, it would be your temperature setting from cold to hot. And then this would be where you want the <clears throat> air to be blowing out of. All right here in the face area, the face and feet, all feet, Defrost and feet or all defrost. <clears throat> For the recycle and the air conditioner buttons to work, uh, the setting here on the fan has to be at least on one or above. Below that, we have USB and USB C chargers and a 12 volt outlet for chargers. This 12 volt outlet is not intended for cigarette lighter. Below that, we have a couple of cup holders and a drawer that can be opened. Store things convenient for the driver. 
Okay, over on the passenger side console, when you first come in the door, you have a battery disconnect switch here. So to use any of the coach functions, that'll need to be turned on. Uh, to turn it off, just press it the opposite way here towards the light, and the light will go out. I'm not going to do that because it'll kill all the lights in the coach here right now. So then next to that, you have the cargo lock unlock button. So that will, that's one of the ways you can lock and unlock your compartment doors. You can also do it with a grab handle outside or the key fob. We'll get to those later. Underneath, down here at the bottom, there's a fire extinguisher. Um, if you need to use that, just grab the strap, release it, and follow the instructions on the fire extinguisher to pull the pin and aim at the flame. Okay, so right here uh, on the top, we have a cup holder, then we have three switches and a, uh, another wireless charger. So, use a wireless charger, just set your phone on there, find the sweet spot, and it'll start charging. So this switch here is the patio light. It will turn the light on outside the door and also the lights in the step well. The map light will turn the light on right above the passenger in the ceiling and the step cover step cover switch will extend or retract the step cover and we're going to run it out right now so you can see that once the step cover has come all the way out and come up it's flush with the floor then you have the ability to stand on this cover and get up and down off of the passenger seat without stepping down into the step well. When you're finished using it, just push the button the opposite way to retract it, and it will retract back in underneath the floor and expose the entrance steps. On your driver or passenger seat, uh, they both work the same. You have a control that looks like this. You can move the seat forward backwards you can also tilt the entire seat up and down to your liking. The next switch back controls the lumbar support in the lower back area of the seat. Then the next switch back controls the footrest. So you can extend the footrest or retract the footrest. On the opposite side, there's a lever that will allow you to swivel the seat. On this side right here, there's one additional lever that will allow you to recline the seat or set it up straight. The armrest will come down and there's a lever right in the end of the armrest here that you can press up and adjust the armrest to the level, position you like it. And then it will stay in that position every time you put it down until you adjust it again. Just pull the lever up, move it up, and set it to your liking. There. Are all four armrests are the same on the passenger and driver's seat. To store it up out of your way, you don't need to press the lever, just push it up. I'm going to release the lever on the other side and spin the seat around. So this is the lever that releases that. You may need to move the seat forward or backwards uh, to get enough clearance against the wall, depending on the position of your seat. Uh, once it's out over here, you can extend the footrest if you'd like. And then to store it 
it back into the travel position. Just rotate it around until it locks back into place. And those, the driver's seat works identical to that. The only difference is you may have to move the steering wheel forward to get enough clearance to turn it around. Uh, and the footrest will not operate if the uh, park brake has been released. We don't want you to accidentally put the footrest out while you're driving. Moving into the front overhead control panel. Uh, this particular coach has the drop down bunk, so this compartment's a little bit smaller than on some of the coaches. But right here we have <clears throat> off door and door side slide out. These switches have to be held in the in or out position for the um, slide out to operate. If you release them at any time during that process, they will stop. The few important things to remember before actually pushing these switches to run the slide outs in or out, you need to make sure that your seat and your driver's and passenger seats are forward and out of the way of the travel of the slide out. You also need to uh, look outside and make sure that you have enough clearance from, you know, trees, picnic tables, um, anything that might be in the way, vehicles, um, before you extend them. And that you're on airbags. Uh, that your coach is aired up and it, you're on full uh, air suspension uh, before you run these out. <clears throat> then you'd press and run them out. You'd press and hold it on the out position until they actually stop. Then you can release the switch. It's the same, same way uh, for both of them. And then once you are done camping and you want to run them in, you would, if you put your jacks down, you would retract your jacks, start your engine, and um, air up the coach so that you're on air suspension again. And then you would proceed to press and hold the button in and retract the slide outs. Uh, you also want to make sure that before you run them in that you have everything out of the way on the inside of the coach as well as the driver and passenger seats forward and out of the way. You have your inverter, magnum inverter control. Uh, this allows you to turn the inverter itself on and off as well as the charger on and off. So. <clears throat> this is uh, important that anytime you're plugged in or you have your generator running, you would want to enable your charger and you would get this solid green light on the charger. If, you, if the charger's off, it will say charger standby and the charger light will be flashing. So at that point, even though you would be plugged in, you would not be charging your battery bank. So, I want to leave that enabled. The inverter, <clears throat> that's a personal preference, whether you keep your inverter turned on or off. Um, if you're plugged in to shore power or your generator's running, you don't actually need your inverters turned on. Any time that you want to use the inverter to change battery power to uh, 120 volt AC, that's when you need that on. So like if you were dry camping and you wanted to uh, use the microwave or 
you wanted to uh, power up the refrigerator, you would need that turned on. <clears throat> the shore power button allows you to change your shore power settings. Um, right now it says 30 amp max, which would mean that the maximum that you're allowing the magnum inverter to use is 30 amps. Um, if you were plugged into less than 30 amps, you would want to do that and come in here and select uh, something lower so that you would not blow the breaker. <clears throat> AGS, we do not use the AGS function any longer. Meter just allows you to come in and see what the voltages and stuff are and uh, the charge rates. Setup allows you to set for search watts and stuff like that if you're going to be using your inverter. And then the tech button uh, is primarily for technicians. Uh, you can go in and see different uh, values and things that are going on with uh, the inverter itself. Next to that, we have the awning in and out switch. This is for the entrance door awning. So <clears throat> once again, simple to use. Uh, press it out and it'll go out. Press it uh, in and it'll come in. <clears throat> it will, they will stop automatically uh, on the in or the out position. <clears throat> Next to that you have your security lights for the passenger side. So you can turn the passenger side security light on and off from this location and then the next one says exterior step so <clears throat> the exterior step will normally run in and out every time you open and close the door if you're parked at a campsite you don't necessarily need it to open and close every time you, you open and close the door so you can turn the switch on and it will override the step uh, switch. So it just leaves it out all the time until you're ready to travel. <clears throat> Up here we have the pre precision control um, panel and so anytime we're running the generator or we're plugged into 50 amps, uh, this panel doesn't do a whole lot uh, other than it'll show us the voltages and stuff like that. If you're plugged into 30 amps or less, <clears throat> you come in here and you uh, set, set it for the amount of shore power you're plugged into. It will then shed loads to keep you from blowing the breaker that you're plugged into. So uh, that's why it's, it's a po power management system. Okay, next to that we have our drawer awning controls. So <clears throat> you can come in here and look at the channels, we have one, two, and zero. So channel one would be the front patio awning. Channel two would be the rear patio awning. And channel zero would be both of those awnings. So when you would want to run one or both of those awnings out, you'd come in and select a channel. Once again, one will run the front two will run the rear or zero will run both at the same time. You'd press the out button 
and and they would go out. You'd press the end button. They would come in. You can stop them at any time with that. And then you can also turn the lights on and off with this one here that looks like a light bulb. <clears throat> in addition to that, there's a lock and unlock button. If you want to lock the control panel so that the buttons don't work, you can press and hold the lock button until the lock icon appears. And the same with unlocking, you can press and hold it until the lock button disappears. Um, that just allows, makes it where if anybody touches this uh, while it's locked, it will not operate the awning. The, there's also a remote control for the awnings. Uh, we'll cover that later and it works the same way. Next to that, we have just two storage cabinets. All right, over here on this passenger wall, we have the, this particular coach has the Euroloft uh, bed. And so there's an on off switch here. You can turn the system on. And then once it's turned on, you can use the up and down arrows to lower the bed or raise the bed. So we're gonna lower it since it's all the way up now. Just press and hold the button. It will lower down. It will come down almost to the top of the driver's seats. At that point, you can grab the ladder and you can hook the ladder in these hooks there. And then you have your access to the uh, bunk bed. When you are done using the bunk bed and you want to store it, you would just remove this ladder and store it away. You would come back over and make sure that the key is turned to the on position. You would press and hold the up arrow on the switch until the bed lifts completely up and stops. And then you can turn it off if you wish. One thing then, take note of, the bunk bed does have a 500 pound limit. And then this cover right here will allow access to the motor. And if it was stuck in the down position and you needed to manually lift it, there is a Allen head port on the back side of the motor that you can manually turn to retract this so that you could drive. So below the uh, Euroloft bed switch, we have the Weingard uh, Razor antenna control. And so you can push the power button on. It will uh, show you how many channels it's found. If you go to a new location, you press the scan button or a search button, and it will go through a series of looking for channels in the area. Once it's done, it will put a number back up there. If you're inside of a building, uh, especially if it's a metal building, you probably won't receive any air channels. The buttons below are for fine tuning. You can press the uh, antenna to rotate either to the right or the left. Uh, this particular antenna is contained in a small dome on the roof. The most important part about this switch is probably this. If you're going to watch over the air TV, it needs to be powered on. It is a booster. If you have part cable and you want to watch part cable, you need to turn this off. You will, 
If it's on, you will not receive any part cable signals, even if you're plugged in. Uh, below that, we have the 120 volt outlet with USB chargers. And this seat belt for the passenger seat does have a clip here that can be released so you can adjust the uh, position of the seat belt up or down depending on how tall or short you are. Uh, moving over into the <clears throat> living room area, there's a small storage space underneath the slide-out tabletop there. You have the TV behind the sofa that can be uh, lifted up. You do need to have it stored in the lowered position for travel, but you can use any of the uh, switches in the coach um, to raise that TV in. So you would go to the home screen Then you would go to TV lift and then press the TV lift up or down, whichever you want to do. Press it once, the TV lift will extend. Once the TV lift is fully extended, you can take one of the Samsung remotes, you can turn the TV on, go through the setting process. Okay, so the TV, every time that you go to a new location, you will need to go in and go to your uh, setup menu and, and you will have to rescan for channels. We'll hit the source button here. We'll get this screen here. We'll scroll over to the settings icon and we'll select that. We'll then scroll over to all settings. We're going to be in the picture menu here and we're going to choose to go down to broadcasting. Once we get into broadcasting, we're going to scroll over to auto program. We're going to select that. It's going to ask you if you want to start and you're going to select start. Then you have to answer one more question. You want to scan for both cable and air channels, air only or cable only. <clears throat> the way that your TV is set up uh, and wired uh, through the antenna, uh, if you choose both, you're only going to get one choice of air or cable, whichever one you're hooked up to and you're um, set up for. So, if you want to do air, <clears throat> you need to come over here and make sure that your WineGuard Razor TV antenna is turned on. When that is powered on, that is a signal booster. And when it is powered off, it transfers part cable through, if you're connected to part cable, it will 
transfer that through to the TV. Okay, we've gotten over here to the auto program and we're ready to start searching for air antenna channels because we now have the WineGuard Razor antenna turned on. So we're going to search that. We'll go through its program here. <clears throat> we're set up today outside with this coach, so it's going to give us uh, channels. And as it uh, finds them, it will start populating uh, what how many channels it's found. Okay, so the search was successful. It found 39 channels. Um, we're going to go ahead and close that. And then we'll be able to exit out of programming menu and watch TV. So at this point, you'll be able to just scroll through your channels that it picked up that were preset. If you have part cable available and you want to scan for part cable, <clears throat> we're basically going to do the same thing with the exception of we're going to come up here and turn off the WineGuard TV antenna. We're going to power it off. Okay. And you can see that it killed our signal, our over the air signal. So we're going to go down again and we're going to go to the settings. Scroll over to all settings again. Select it, go down to broadcasting, select it, go to auto program, select it. We're going to start auto program. And then this time, instead of choosing air, we're going to go down and choose cable. <clears throat> now, we are not connected to part cable, so it's not going to find any channels, but this is showing you how you would do that. So it'll go through the scanning process, looking for channels. And then if you're hooked up to cable and you have a good signal, it will populate how many cable channels it has found for you. You'll be able to then scroll through those uh, just like you did on the air channels. <clears throat> just remember, this has to be done Every time you change locations, your digital over the air channels will change, and so will your cable channels if you uh, go to a different uh, park that has cable available. Good. All right. We're going to go ahead and stop this uh, scan because it's not going to find any channels. <clears throat> and we're going to close out of that. You'll also be able to choose other sources uh, if you're connected to them, such as if you put a Blu ray or a DVD player in your overhead cabinet, then and it's hooked up, you can uh, choose that and watch that on the uh, TV as well. Gives you a brief rundown of the TV, how to set up for channels. Remember, you'll have to do this for each TV. Okay, uh, on the opposite side of the coach, you have your theater seating. So on your theater seating, you do have a door that opens here, exposes a large storage area and a slider tray. Got a couple of just standard cup holders. 
And then right here on the side would be the controls for extending uh, the footrest and, and reclining. So you would press on the forward side of the button that would extend and recline the seat to retract it back into the upright position. You would just press the switch on the opposite side, the back side that would retract the back and the footrest. Right in the center of those two switches is a USB charger port that you can use to charge any of your electronic devices. Above the theater seating, you just have a row of storage cabinets here. Really nothing uh, else in there. Behind the theater seat, you do have a shade and the shades in the Ventana are manual. You do have a screen or a blackout shade, your choice. And those are manual attraction and extension. You just pull them down and hold them and they will hold in place. Then to retract them, you just pull them down and release them. This window does have crank out vents that you can uh, open for ventilation as desired. When you're done with those before travel, you would crank these shut. The windows on the side of the slide out room also open. You can unlock the lock at the top. You can pull the window up into a locking clips that hold it up. The screen can be opened as well. And then once you're ready to close the window, you have to depress these locks here, one on each side, push the window back down into place and then flip the lock. Okay, the dinette. The dinette can be extended. Uh, there's two table leaves that can be installed. So you can open this table up like that. There is a hidden leg in here that you can push down for extra support. You wanna do that anytime you put this, both leaves in. If you only put one leaf in, it will not fall down into place um, without pulling it all the way out and then uh, retracting it. So the leaves can be installed. There's metal clips uh, that line up and the back of the leaves are numbered one and two. So um, one would be going against this table here. And then you can choose to either put uh, one or both leaves in. Just press them back into place with the metal tabs lined up. And then uh, you have two additional dinette chairs um, that are located underneath the bed. And you can put those at the end of the table if you only put one leaf in or you can extend it with both leaves and then you can put them beside the dinette for two extra seats.
Okay, once you're done using the leaves in the dinette table to retract it, just pull it, it all the way out, grab the leg, push it up into place. There's magnets that will hold it in place and then you can just push it back into the, the small table. Underneath each side of the dinette, there's a little cut out here. You can reach your fingers underneath there. There's a latch underneath there that will open more storage drawers. And that's the same on both sides of the dinette. All right, in the kitchen area, we'll start over here on the left. We have more storage space, more storage space above the microwave. This cabinet. More storage space with a pull-out drawer. This also contains the plug for the microwave and several information stickers in here, um, as well as your paint codes and um, your vehicle weights. Additional storage. Underneath the cabinet here, there's a small button that can be pressed to release the countertop extension. Uh, those drawers can still be operated. <clears throat> this cabinet, when it comes from the factory, has a lot of accessories in it. Uh, Touch-up paint, Gerard awning, uh, USB plug for your water bay, an adjustment tool for the Gerard awning motors, an emergency retraction rod for the Gerard awning motors, several remotes for TVs, and um, Bose speakers, your remote for your bed. If optioned with the flagpole bracket, the flagpole bracket also comes in here as well as an air coupling and a, a hubcap wrench for your chassis supplied uh, hubcaps and the air fitting at the back of the coach. Uh, in this box is a Gerard remote for the awnings. We'll uh, go over that operation when we're outside. There are, are a couple of miscellaneous things like parts that were not used for the dishwasher. They come with it, so they ship them in here. Uh, but with our installation, they're not needed. <clears throat> so to store this back in place, just come up here and kind of bump it with your hip and push it firmly until it latches. Above here, we have the stove and stove covers. Both stove covers have on the back side a cutting board. The stove itself is a induction cooktop. Um, there's a power button here that, where it can be turned on. If you do not have a magnetic type pan, there's a little sticker here that gives you some uh, instructions on that. But if you don't have a magnetic type pan on here, when you turn it on, uh, it will time out shortly and it will uh, turn back off. 
One unique feature is this is removable. So if you would like to remove this and cook outdoors, you can do that as well. You just unplug this, carry this unit outside, set it on the picnic table, do your cooking. You can bring it back in, just push your cord back in here and plug it back in. You can lift it right up, set it back in place. Your stovetop covers, the handles go towards the outside edge and the corners are kind of rounded on the uh, covers. That's the only way they'll fit. <clears throat> Underneath, the stove is your dishwasher. So right now it's locked. If you turn the power on and wait a second, it will unlock. At that point, you can open the dishwasher and you can use the control panel to set up your wash cycles and um, fill your drying agent and all that good stuff. There's more information on that, both in your Newmar owner's manual and uh, should be a packet also on this in your black bag, which we'll get to in a little bit. Before you travel, you want to turn the power off on this and make sure that it's locked so that it does not open during travel. Moving over to the, under the sink, you have more storage space here, as well as a trash can that's supplied, and then a tip out drawer for cleaning product, products or sponges. <clears throat> the sink, kitchen sink, has covers as well. They can be stored right down here. And the sink faucet will rotate. You can also pull it down on the back side here. It does have a button for the sprayer feature. And then you just use the joystick single control here to turn it on and adjust the temperature. <clears throat> the window behind has crank out vents just like the ones at the dinette and the uh, theater seating, you just crank to open and crank to close. Underneath the kitchen cabinets, there's GFI outlets. And this one here actually contains the GFI uh, outlet that with the resettable, um, that, that is resettable. So if at any time that that one or the other ones don't work and you have power to it, check it right in the center there. It may need to be reset. Just push the reset button and then retest. <clears throat> the microwave above uh, has a couple of latches. It has the standard latch from Whirlpool, as well as an added latch that Newmar puts on for travel. Just make sure it's closed firmly. And one thing you'll, you'll need to do uh, before using this is set up your clock. It's pretty easy. Come over here once it's turned on to the button that says settings and clock. And then it kind of walks you through it here. Set clock. 
you can put your time in. Uh, 12 o'clock. And then it's going to tell you to select. Once you select 12 o'clock, and then it's going to ask you for AM or PM, or if you want to be in the 24-hour mode. So we're going to do 2 for PM. And then the clock is set up for 12 o'clock p.m. Here on the end, we have another uh, small storage drawer. And then underneath, we have a vent grill for your Oasis heating. Right beside that, we have a port for the central vac system. You can use a broom and sweep your debris right up here to the edge of this. This is your port for the central vac. You can either sweep your debris right up there, lift that door and sweep it in and it'll turn on. Or you can use your accessories and plug into this port. So you can simply open this port and sweep any debris with a broom into this port and it will suck it into the central vac um, just by lifting that door up. There's also a bag of <clears throat> accessories and a hose. So you have another port over here and this port allows you to connect this hose into the port. And then this is a uh, remote operated on off switch for the to turn the unit on and off down in the basement. So just remember two things about it. One, if it doesn't work, there's a couple of screws here that can be taken off. And this can be opened up. There's a battery inside there. It's battery operated. Second thing is to remember about this is if you store this in a p place that this button gets hit, it does not have to be connected to turn the system on. That's the two most important things to remember about the system. But anyway, after that, you can hit the button uh, once, turn it on, hit it again, and turn it off. This can also be used directly in the basement from the um, central vac system. There's a port down there that it, the hose can be plugged into and uh, so you can sweep your cargo bays also. So here we have our fantastic fan control. <clears throat> this coach has several of them. We're going to tell you uh, how to work it on one and so to power it on, you can press the power button. You can use the speed control to adjust the speed. You can push the up button or the down button to uh, raise or lower the lid on it. <clears throat> and in the event you go to use it and you've been doing a bunch of showers or cooking or whatever, and there's moisture on the rain sensor, or maybe you uh, maybe it rained and it shut because the rain sensor uh, made it shut. Uh, there's some remaining moisture up there. <clears throat> you can override the rain sensor because if it detects rain, it won't let it come on and operate. So to override the rain sensor, you press and hold the down button for a minimum of three seconds. The rain sensor light will come on override the rain sensor override uh, light will come on 
when you're done using the fan, you can press the off button. Um, once it is done and stowed, <clears throat> you can turn the uh, rain sensor back on by pressing and holding the down button again. It's a convenient feature. Just remember, if you turn the rain sensor off and it starts pouring down rain, you could get rain inside your coach uh, because the fantastic vent will not close on its own. There is a manual uh, operation knob in the Fantastic Fan. You can remove the wood cover just by grabbing it and pulling it straight down. You can use this here to manually crank the uh, fan lid up or down. And there also Right here is a glass fuse holder that's incorporated in with the uh, fantastic fan. If that blows, the fan will not operate. To reinstall the cover, just line up the latches and press it back in place, and that will hold the cover in place. Right beside the fantastic fan, you have a thermistor for the living room area of the coach. Um, this is connected to the heating and air conditioning system. Right above that, you have your 10 inch KIB panel. When it's black, you can touch it once to open it up. It will display the different icons that are available on the particular coach you're in at the time. So you can view tanks. Uh, you have your water pump. You can turn it on and off. You can uh, enable your autofill right here by turning it on or your top off. <clears throat> You can read your house and chassis voltages right here, as well as see the level in your fresh gray and black tanks. If the coach had tank heat, you would see uh, tank heat underneath those as well, and you would be able to turn those on and off from this screen as well. Um, there are a set of master uh, light switches here that appear on this screen as well. And the TV lift up and down. <clears throat> you can go to your AGS, which is your automatic generator start. You can turn it on or off. You can also uh, set set up quiet times here in this menu. You can also set house and chassis battery voltage levels for when to turn the generator on based on uh, voltages. The AGS HVAC screen uh, or the AGS HVAC button enables AGS from the air conditioner units or you can enable quiet time. On this screen, if the generator 
start started, it will tell you that it's um, either running or it's in quiet time or you have shore power. <clears throat> and then the demand here will tell you what caused it to turn on, whether it was the air conditioners or the house battery or chassis battery level that caused it to start. In the floor heat screen, very simple. The floor heat is sectioned off into three, three areas, the front, middle, and back of the coach. So to turn one on, you just turn it on with the power button, and then you select high, medium, or low. If you don't want the floor heat on, you just press the off button. HVAC control. Most important part of this one here is no matter what uh, screen you're in here, you have to have the power button turned on. So I just turned the power on for the living room section. You can choose the mode. You can do auto, heat pump, furnace, fan, off, or cool. And then the fan as well, you can do auto or forced, a low, medium, or high. <clears throat> In this screen, you also have the Oasis controls in this screen. So you can turn the burner on or off. And if it's on, you'll see burner over here in the screen. And then the AC elements. If you're plugged in or your generator's running, you can run the AC elements. You can either run one element or both elements. You can select up here between the living room, kitchen, and bedroom. And <clears throat> You can set each zone at a different temperature if you want. <clears throat> Over here on this side, you can set up uh, your run programs or your week programs if you want to get that in depth into the temperatures to be in your coach. Or you can set the temperature and hit hold and it will hold the temperature at that level. There's also this ECO mode. The ECO mode allows a five to 15 degree swing in the set temperature. So if you wanna save a little energy and you have your coach set at 74 and you have it on a five degree swing. Uh, if you're on cooling, it will allow it to get five degrees warmer than your set temperature before the cooling kicks in. And then if you're on heating, it will allow you to get five degrees colder before the furnace or the heating device kicks on. Bluetooth pair <clears throat> is a screen that gives you the instructions here on how to pair your phone. Um, you're able to pair your phone and do all these controls on your phone. Just follow the instructions here and then press pair and you have to look it up on your phone and select uh, this as well once you have the uh, Connected Solutions app installed. The lighting screen, you can choose between living room, kitchen, bath, bedroom, and storeroom. And when, when you change your selection, 
this screen right here will change based on what's available in that room. This master control side of it right here will stay the same. So if you change the kitchen, you'll see the different lights available in the kitchen area, <clears throat> as well as the bathroom, bedroom, and the storeroom. Once again, these all stay the same. It's like the master controls for all lights on and off in the different rooms. Okay, so in the half bath or storeroom, we have a lighting control switch panel here. Allows you to do the ceiling light vanity. You can turn the water pump on and off. You can also dim the backlighting on this switch or black it out. And then you can uh, choose between high and low for the ceiling lights. This switch here allows you to turn the fan on or off for the Oasis heat in the bathroom. When the this zone is on, you may get too warm in the bathroom uh, if it's closed up and you have the fan on, so it's just a switch to allow you to turn that off. Above that, you have another um, fantastic fan control. It works identical to the one we just went over uh, a minute ago. You have the medicine cabinet here. In this cabinet, you have some more storage space. You also have a black cover right up at the top. That's your satellite prep. Uh, conduit behind that, as well as your Starlink module and your Starlink router. <clears throat> In this panel, we have the 12 volt and 120 volt fuse panels <clears throat> for the coach. These fuses here are labeled right here on the sticker of what they go to. If you have a fuse blown, <clears throat> select another fuse of the same size based on what this says here. And there are spare fuses right here. Moving up here, two GFIs up here. For the floor heat, floor heat one and two. Uh, if they trip, you can simply come in here and reset them. And then on this side, we have our precision circuits 120 volt panel. <clears throat> They're labeled here on what the breakers go to. And then all the breakers down to this point right here where they start being renumbered. <clears throat> so starting down here, one through eight is the inverter, the circuits that are on the inverter. <clears throat> so if you're not plugged into shore power <clears throat> and you're running your inverter, these breakers right here are the only ones that are going to be supplied with 120 volt power. <clears throat> Once you, when you're plugged in or your generator's running, all these breakers will be have 120 volt power to them. If a breaker is turned off or tripped, if it's tripped, it'll be about halfway. You have to turn it completely off and then turn it back on to reset. Below that, you have a window with manual blinds and screens. And then you do have a vent that can be opened or closed. Right beside that, there's another 
outlet. It's GFI protected. So if it's not working or the ones in the basement aren't working, so right now there's no green light on it. So we would need to reset that one. Um, if we had the uh, power available to it. So if we turn the generator on or plug into shore power, we'd be able to re reset it. And the green light would come on down here in the corner. Below the lav, we have a, some more doors with storage. All can also contains um, some junction boxes for the floor heat. <clears throat> Behind that, we have the Dometic flush switch. So when you have the green LED available here, that lets you know that there's power available. You also have the blue lights here. The top one will allow you to add water to the bowl as long as you're connected to water or the water pumps on and there's water in the tank. <clears throat> the one below it will allow you to flush the toilet. There's another LED underneath this green one here. If it's yellow, that means you're approximately 75% full on your uh, black tank. And you need to start thinking about dumping your tanks. If it turns red, this will be disabled and you will not be able to uh, flush your toilet because that's saying that the, the black tank is 100% full. Across from the half bath behind the dinette, we have our Whirlpool stainless steel refrigerator. Uh, these doors are open right now. You can open it up. It comes with a water filter and a um, fresh air filter. They call it a fresh flow air filter. The fresh flow filter goes right back here behind this little door. You have to pull the top shelf out to open that up and get to it. On the water filter, just reach down underneath the bottom here and flip the latch open. This is designed so it will only go in one direction. You insert this in, push it all the way into place. Push it all the way into place. It has arrows that show it in the up arrow, up direction. Once you push it all the way in, this door can be closed. <clears throat> but since this <clears throat> coach is winterized, I'm not going to install it. <clears throat> Underneath, you have the freezer compartment. And in the back corner here, there is a <clears throat> ice maker. And there's a bail arm. If the bail arm is down and the refrigerator is on and there's water supply to it, it will make ice. If it's lifted up, that turns the ice maker off. <clears throat> right now, this touch panel says the cooling is off. <clears throat> you would want to do that if you wanted to put it in storage mode. But when in use, you want the compressor to be active. So you press and hold those two buttons on the outside there. It says for three seconds. <clears throat> then you can adjust the temperature of the freezer or the refrigerator um, just by pressing the freezer temp or the fridge temp buttons. The more stove flakes you have, the colder it is. Reset your air filter. Reset your water filter. Uh, put it in fast cool mode. All those 
uh, instructions are right there. You hold them for three seconds. If you want to get water out of the refrigerator, cold water out of the refrigerator, as long as you have pressurized water connected to the coach or the water pumps on, you can press and hold the, your cup up against this right here. The water will come out. <clears throat> Once again, you want to go into storage mode, press and hold that, and turn the cooling off. Before you travel, you want to flip that lock backwards and you want to pull on each door to make sure it's locked. You don't want them to open during travel. It tends to make a mess. Right next to that, we have the pantry. <clears throat> Pretty standard, uh, except for these are called push to open drawers. You can't open them unless you push on them first and then that releases them so you can slide them open. Once you're done, you just press them in again and that locks them so they will not open during travel. <clears throat> if you wish to adjust your shelves to a different position in the lineup here, there's tabs here on the side. You pull these all the way out. Uh, so on one side, you pull it down. The other side, you lift it up. That releases the drawer guide in the drawer. <clears throat> then if you want to change the position here, you can just pull on these. There's these plastic dolls that are holding them in place. You would just pull them, all four of them out, move them up or down to the desired position, and just push the dolls back in place. Uh, there's a set of pre-drilled pre holes all along the side here. Then once you have it in the desired position, you simply line the drawer back up with the drawer guide, and you... <coughs> Operate it until you can close it and lock it. So in the bedroom, we're gonna run the bed slide out. So to do that, we just check and make sure that there's nothing in the way. We press and hold the out button. <clears throat> You keep holding it until the slide out reaches its full extension, it will stop, then you can release the switch. Once again, you wanna do that on air, air ride suspension and um, the jacks being retracted. So coming into the bedroom, you have a slider door Unlock it, just press down on the lock. It'll slide open, grabs the second door, and when you get it all the way closed, it will lock into place again. So to open it back up, press down on the lock again, open it back up, and it locks back into place there. You do want to check these before traveling to make sure they're locked in the open position so that the doors aren't banging around as you drive. You have a set of switches here that say speaker on them. These will turn the speakers in the ceiling on and off, and they are hooked to the dash radio. Above there, you have the thermistor for the bedroom zone. Down beside here, there's a 120 volt outlet with uh, USB chargers. Uh, so you can plug in and charge your devices. 
Just below that, there's a small storage cabinet. And it's identical on the other side of the bed. In the overhead <clears throat> cabinet, you have storage up here. Right in the middle is a 120 volt outlet for a CPAP machine if needed. And right back here on the inside and outside is a port where a CPAP hose can be ran through once again if needed. <clears throat> and then you can see that it's storage here. And then those two doors are identical to the ones I just opened. Here on the side, uh, <clears throat> you have a window that can be opened. Instead of it being like the ones on the other slide where they open up, these uh, unlock and slide open to the side. And the screen can be opened as well. Or they're tall and skinny, so they kind of twist a little bit. Got it. Better if you use two hands when you do that. <clears throat> uh, again, <clears throat> you have manual <clears throat> shades and screens there that can be operated. <clears throat> above, <clears throat> above the overhead cabinet, there's a couple of reading lights and uh, <clears throat> a switch here for the security light. You can turn the security light on and off there, as well as there's a <clears throat> touch panel there <clears throat> so that you can turn on and off uh, lights and see tank levels and everything uh, just like you could on the other switch panels that we showed you. Underneath the bed, you can reach down and grab the wood panel underneath the bed and lift up on it. There's struts that will hold it open. There's additional storage underneath the bed from the factory. The extra chairs and table leaves are stored underneath there. You can also store the bladder underneath there if desired. In addition, the pump for the Air mattress is also underneath the bed in that location. The air bed can be operated left side, right side, and then it can be adjusted with this remote control as well. Uh, you'll either need the inverter turned on or to be plugged in shore power or the generator running because the pump runs on 120 volt. So starting here, we have a wardrobe cabinet and there's a light manual on off switch on that light on it. Right here on the side, there's a sheet of paper that gives the model and serial numbers for your appliances. Also, there's your black bag that contains your owner's manual. Also contains several uh, owner and user manuals for different appliances and uh, accessories that are in your coach. Uh, many of those have warranty papers along with them. So you want to fill those out. Next to that, you have the TV. This is a fixed mount TV. Um, once again, uh, anytime that you come to a new location, you'll have to go into the menu and uh, scan for new over the air TV channels or new cable channels if you're watching that type of TV. <clears throat> On the 
on this side you have another wardrobe cabinet with another overhead light as well as the outlet for the TV. Down below here, these are all storage drawers um, that pull out with the exception of this one right here. This one right here is the audio, audio visual cabinet for the rear TV. And much like the front one, we have a um, set of HDMI cables here uh, for a Blu-ray or a DVD player. We have a couple of outlets in there. So if you want to install a uh, another satellite receiver for the bedroom TV, that can be done here as well. Um, and those connections that are in this cabinet go up to the bedroom TV. So the rest of these, as I stated before, are just storage drawers. So underneath the TV, there's a window and it's, it is an emergency exit window. Uh, to open it, just release the lever, push down on it and then push out on it. You can push it like that and open it for just a window vent. In the case of an emergency, if you needed to get out, you would just grab this red handle here and pull the screen out of the way and continue to push the window open uh, so that you can exit. When you're done with the window being open or done exiting and you want to close it, just put the screen back in place, put this handle back around here and latch it back into place there. Right, moving into the rear bath, there's a pocket door. can be opened by pushing down on the latch. Once again, it will close and latch. To reopen it, you have to push down on the latch and you want to push it all the way back till it latches for the travel position. Um, you don't want it loose banging around as you travel. Moving into the bathroom, you have the washer dryer and the, the dryer is on top. Pretty simple operation. Uh, you can select High heat, low heat, you can set your timer and then your start button there on the side. You have uh, your door and a lint trap. On the washer machine, um, you have your door here that you can put your detergent and stuff in. You have your control panel here you, where you can select uh, what you're washing and then your power on off buttons and then your start button over here. Uh, one thing to point out is this notice here. Uh, this is hooked to the gray tank and we want you to be in a position where you can open your gray tank valve and drain it. Uh, because the washing machine pumps a lot of water, uses a lot of water and pumps it into the tank. We don't want you to overfill your tank and have water coming up in your <clears throat> shower and overflowing into your coach. So that's why that notice is there that you need to hook up your sewage dump uh, and open your gray tank valve before you're using your washing machine. So right above your washing machine, you have your valves for your water for the washing machine. You also have the electrical outlets for your washer and dryer. Those are on GFI um, outlets. So in case you're plugged in and your washer and dryer is not working, you want to go here and check and make sure the GFI is not tripped. 
Moving back to your rear vanity area, you have storage, medicine cabinet, whatever you want to use it for. You have your two vessel sinks with uh, faucets. You can select the temperature setting and then pull them up or down to shut the water on and off. Inside the bowl, if you want to hold water, you push down on and release. And then if you've held water in it and you want to release that water, you press down and uh, let it open up again. Underneath that, there's more storage. Underneath drawers. <clears throat> the middle section in between and another storage door on this side is another one of the KIB panels and once again you can touch the home button and you can do any of the following uh, HVAC AGS floor heat lights tanks TV lift so this pretty much mirrors the larger 10 inch screen and you can turn lights on and off as well from there. Okay, on the shower, um, this is a travel latch here. So you wanna make sure that that's locked for travel. Once you get to your destination, you can unlock it. You can just use the magnetic strip to open and close the door. Inside, you'll find a seat that can be lowered or you can lift and store back against the wall. This coach is equipped with a shower miser system. There's this blue um, plastic piece here. <clears throat> and to save water, <clears throat> conserve water, you can turn this diverter valve over to the recycle position. <clears throat> You'll see embossed on that uh, uh, ring, there's a recycle emblem. So you turn it to the recycle mode. Anytime that your uh, water heater is on, your oasis system's on, so you have hot water, you have the water pump on, or you're um, connected to city water. The water will flow through here. As it gets warm, this blue will turn to a translucent color, milky white color. At that point, you'll know that the water is hot back here to your shower. You can then rotate this around to the shower position. Come in, adjust your temperature to your liking, and then select with this button here, either your shower head or your hand wand. <clears throat> One thing to note is if you're connected to city water and you put this over into the recycle mode, the whole time that's in the recycle mode, you're adding water to your fresh tank. So you could get done with a shower. It may appear that your, your um, autofill is malfunctioning and has overfilled the coach. But that's not the case. You've left this in recycle mode and you've overfilled your tank. So um, we've had customers before that want to shut their shower off to conserve water and they flip this over in the recycle mode. That's not what this is for. Um, that's still running water uh, out of your tank and back into your tank if you're dry camping or if you are connected city water 
it's actually uh, running new water in and filling your fresh tank. All right, back here by the emergency exit door, we have another fan control. Once again, it works identical to the fan controls we already explained, so I'm not going to go through it again. We have a window here, has the crank out vent. <clears throat> you want to have it in a closed position for travel. You have emergency exit door here. You can unlock the door. Um, you can unlock it here with the deadbolt and unlock it here with the latch. If you want to use the emergency exit, you grab this panel here, you pull that off. You grab, you grab the Velcro strap here and you drop the ladder down and it will extend down to the ground. I'll go outside and show you how to retract it. All right, so to retract the ladder, we'd grab it. We just start retracting the telescoping portion. We roll this up into the holder, grab the Velcro here, and pull the Velcro as tight as we can there to hold it in place. We then grab the panel. It's held on by magnets. Press it back into place and shut the door firmly. What's my hair look like? Probably a mess. Once the door is shut, you can come in and relock the locks. Below that, we have the Dometic toilet. And once again, this flush switch works just like the one in the other bathroom. You can add water, flush, or if you have amber or red lights on the panel, you'd want to dump your tanks. Yellow would mean you're approximately 75% or above. Uh, red would mean you're 100% full and you will not be able to flush the toilet. Above that, you have uh, another cabinet that can be used either as a wardrobe. You can remove these shelves or it can be used as a cabinet with shelves. In the two large wardrobe doors, you can open those. You can gain access to the safe over here on the right. Some more shelving, a lot of storage space, more closet space, and a couple of manually operated lights. In the cabinet door behind, You'll find the KIB lighting control panel. And then just below the wardrobe, you'll find there's a access panel here in the floor. And this wood panel right here is removable as well. So you can remove this wood panel, take the black plugs out and a series of screws that are underneath the panel and underneath the plugs. And you can remove that section um, of floor to access the engine. All right, in the bedroom or the front uh, living room area, there are uh, panels to access the air conditioner filters. So once you've pulled these down, release the magnets, you can reach up in here, and grab a hold of the filters and filter grills. This filter is removable and you can either buy new filters from the new bar parts department 
or you can take these and wash them in warm soapy water, let them dry, put them back on, and then you grab them right here at the center near the clips, and you just simply push them back in place up there. So these are the return air grills, <clears throat> and there's some of them in the back bathroom that do not that are not under a wood panel. You want to clean those as well, and then as well as the ones up in the front in the other large panel like this. When you're done cleaning them all, you want to push this back up into place. There's magnets that will hold it up into place right in front of <clears throat> the bedroom. AC uh, filter area, you have your CO detector and you can take and press that in the center. You'll get the audible tones and that'll let you know that your battery is up and good and that the system that the detector is working if you test it and you don't get those just squeeze on the side it will open up you have a nine volt battery that can be replaced and then once you replace the battery you would want to close that back up and retest it make sure that the detector is working up in the front of the coach you have another detector that looks very similar to that one. This one is the smoke detector. We put this label across, the, across it to test it once a week. There is an LED light that flashes on it. It can be pressed in the center as well to test it. buttons underneath the sticker so sometimes you have to kind of look at the where the button's at anyways <clears throat> if it operates you're in good shape if not once again press on the sides it will open up there's a nine volt battery in there that can be replaced once replaced shut it retest it make sure it's operational so on the full wall slide out on the Ventana, it's an electric slide out and it has several rollers underneath it. Before um, leaving your destination, you want to put your transport pads down. So to do that, you want to make sure that your jacks are retracted, you're on airbags, and then you want to come to the off door side slide out and you want to start to run it in just a little bit until it starts up the ramp. <clears throat> Once it starts up the ramp, you wanna take these transport pads and there's 10 of them. There's a side that has a coating on it and there's a side that's like pebbled black plastic. It also has a taper uh, ground on it. But you want to come in here and you want to look to see where your rollers are. And you want to put these pads right in line with the rollers with the edge of the tile floor. So you want to do that in each roller location along the slide out. <clears throat> and you get the idea. You'll do that till you have all 10 of them installed. And then you'll come back up to the slide out switch and you'll continue to run the slide out in. <clears throat> the slide out will come up over the ramp and it will 
start rolling on those pads. And the idea of this is so that once the slide out is all the way in, the rollers will be setting on those pads and will not leave roller marks on your tile floor. Once you get to your location, you can <clears throat> open your slide out and you can pick those pads up and store them out of the way until you're ready to go again. All right, at the outside front of your Ventana, you can come over to the electrical compartment, pull the hood latch release, and then you're able to open up the front hood. The bottom portion is fixed, it does not open. We'll kind of go through the important things that you need to know about in here. So down below here is your windshield washer fluid reservoir. You can open the cap there and fill that. Your air horns are located here and there. Uh, we went over the switch that selects those on the inside. Right here, this coach is optioned with the front hot water uh, spigot. So, uh, when you're using this, um, the Oasis will have to be turned on for you to have hot water. And you also need a um, pressurized water source for this to operate, okay? Uh, when it's not in use, and especially in cold weather, there's a valve right here below it that you can flip a quarter turn and open, you'll see water drains out on the ground. There's also an additional valve inside the compartment that we'll show you as we go around the coach so that you can turn the water supply off to this area so that it doesn't freeze and bust. You'll, when you are in the use position, you'll have to have that closed. <clears throat> Right here is a fuel filter for your ITR Oasis uh, burner. You have a manual on and off uh, light right here. And then below that is your Onan generator. Um, there is a start stop switch here. It can be manually operated from outside the unit works just like from the inside you press and hold it to start it press and release to stop it right beside the switch is an hour meter so you know how many hours is on your generator how many hours it's been ran and then right beside that right here is a breaker if this breaker is not on or has tripped <clears throat> You can have your generator running, but still not get shore power inside. So anytime you have that issue, you wanna come out here and turn this breaker on, make sure that that breaker is turned on so that the power actually is leaving the generator and going to the transfer switch. Right above those, you have your oil fill and your coolant fill. The coolant fill you can actually see right here in the window. This would be your HVAC unit for the dash area. And then right below it here, um, kind of hard to see, but there's a reservoir right here and uh, the pump for your leveling jacks. So equalizer jacks and then there is a cap right here on the top that can be unscrewed and it contains a dipstick. So you can check the oil level on that, the hydraulic uh, fluid. And we use Dextron Mercron transmission fluid for those. So if you need to add any. Uh, 
You also have access to your the back of your headlights and turn signals for the front of the coach. And then down below right here uh, is the <clears throat> collision mitigation system sensor. When you are done in this area, you can just close that and check and make sure it's closed securely. Right up here above the wipers is the eye for your mobile eye um, lane warning system. And then above that is the front camera for the 360 degree uh, camera system on this coach. <clears throat> Got fog lights down below, headlights there in the middle. Uh, one thing to note when you're using fog lights, if your bright lights are on, the fog lights will go out. So the fog lights only work when you're, the headlights are on the dim setting. <clears throat> the mirrors do have the electric controls inside to adjust the, the uh, mirror. If you still can't get it in adjustment for what you're, you like, there's three Allen screws up here and you can loosen those and that the whole mirror head will tilt or rotate. And you can tighten those Allen screws back down. If you, for any reason, need to move the whole arm, there is a cover right here that can be removed and there's a 9 16 inch uh, bolt head in there that can be loosened and then the whole arm can be moved and tightened back down. <clears throat> this bracket here <clears throat> is the bracket for the flagpole. It just slips down inside here and then you have the opening for the flagpole. You have the right hand turn signal camera that operates any time that you um, turn the turn signal on or that's selectable through the Excite system where we seen earlier in the video. Up above the door, we have the <coughs> carefree door awning. Um, and that operates off of that switch in the overhead cabinet that says awning in out. At, all right, at the front entrance door, there are several ways to lock your door. One, from the grab handle, you can press and hold the <clears throat> number one button. It also has a lock emblem in that number one. So just press and hold that. You'll hear the compartment doors and the entrance door lock. <clears throat> that is just the handle lock. It is not the deadbolt. So to unlock it from there, from the factory, the code is one, two, three, four, four, one. That will unlock the entrance door. And the same is true for the compartment doors. If you go one, two, three, four, four, and you hit number two, it will unlock both the entrance door and the compartment doors at the same time. In addition to using that, the coach comes with a key fob, so pretty standard. You have entry lock and, uh, and unlock and cargo lock and unlock. Um, also, in addition to that, there's the manual keys. You can, this is the only way to lock the deadbolt from the outside is to use the, the key and manually lock the deadbolt from the outside. From the inside, from the inside, once you're inside, you can manually uh, turn this lever towards the lock and the deadbolt will come out. <clears throat> None of the electronic locks operates the deadbolt.
you have the plexiglass slider and you have the screen that can be pulled down and latched into place with the snap. Um, from the inside, that can be opened off of the door. It can, it can be uh, separated from the, the full door. So you have the screen door. Once you close the door, this will latch into position and then it will open the screen door with the entrance door. Um, just inside is the steps that can open for extra storage inside the steps. And then your exterior steps <clears throat> open and close each time that you open and close the door. Unless you want to you want to leave them out when you're camping, you can go up to the front overhead cabinet and flip that switch that says entrance step and then they will stay out instead of closing each time that you open and close the door. They will just stay out the entire time. They will retract if you start the coach and release the park brake. Above the passenger window, we have the um, porch light. All right, right in front of your front tire here against the frame rail, there's a couple of loops there. And you can grab those and pull them to drain any moisture that has collected inside your tanks. You want to do that daily when you've been running the coach. That's a second good use for this awning rod. The intended purpose for the awning rod is to operate the window awnings and can pull the window awning down and clip it there when you get ready to release it you can take it off pull it off let it wind back up and that's the way the window awnings work on this coach uh, above the window awning is the slide out topper the slide out topper automatically extends and retracts with the operation of the slide out. There's really nothing that you as a customer need to do with that other than to make sure before you retract it, there's, there's no limbs, debris, pine needles, snow, ice, anything that would uh, hinder it from rolling up or cause damage. Uh, also, before you run the slide out end, you would want to make sure that there's uh, none of that type of stuff on the top of your slide out roof that's gotten in between the slide out topper and the roof. Uh, that would inhibit the slide out from retracting fully. Above, <clears throat> above the slide out at the top, you have the Gerard awnings. The Gerard awnings, as I stated on the inside, can be controlled um, by selecting the channel that you want to run. One is the front, two is the rear, or zero is both of them. So like right now I have channel one selected. I'm going to run it out a little ways. It's pretty breezy out today, so I'm not going to fully extend it. You can stop it at any time, but this awning also has a feature on it 
uh, as long as the electricity is turned on to it, if it senses that it's the wind is catching it and making it go up and down, uh, it will automatically retract. Uh, once again, like I said, it's pretty breezy today and I'm not going to take the risk of damaging the awning. So I'm just going to run it back in. You can see it's already grabbing the awning. In addition to running the awning in and out, you have a light switch. You can turn the lights on. It's an LED light strip along the bottom rail of the uh, <coughs> Gerard awning. The Gerard awnings will automatically stop when fully retracted. And in addition, if you would have one that is stuck out right up at the very top at the center is a couple of plastic um, hole covers that can be removed and that hex re manual retraction tool that I showed you uh, on the inside of the coach in the kitchen cabinet can be inserted in that and rotated with like a cordless drill uh, to run it in and out. Once again, that would be only be in the emergency situation where <clears throat> something happened electrically or with the motor that wouldn't allow it to run. Other than that, you'd want to use your, your uh, remote whether it be this one or the one in the overhead cabinet uh, above the driver to run your awnings in and out. So <clears throat> right in the middle of the coach there, we have a passenger security light. We have the half bath window and we have the uh, side passenger side camera for the 360 degree view. Moving on back is the bedroom slide out and then the emergency exit door. We'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> take a look here at the entertainment center. And then we will um, go ahead and move on to the compartments below. So in your outside entertainment center, you've got a Samsung TV mounted on a telescoping swivel arm so that you can uh, move this to the position that you like for watching your show outside. When you're done with that, you just push it back in and it has a magnet there that catches it and holds it in place have a Bose speaker underneath the TV. And then right beside it over here is a selector switch for the Bose speaker. It says TV off or dash radio. So if you put it on the TV selection, the whatever sound that you're tuned to from the TV will be playing through there. If you have it off, obviously nothing will play through there. Uh, at least from the house selection. Uh, you can still Bluetooth to it. Uh, but then if you put it on to dash radio, you can listen to whatever is playing on the dash radio. But that's, this is the point where I said on the inside, when we were looking at the Excite radio, that you need to go to house mode. So you have to select house mode on the Excite radio and then have it in dash radio out here for it to play through the Bose speaker. Right above that is the 120 volt outlet with a couple of USB chargers. <clears throat> then that can be closed and it does have a lock on it. It would be this key that's supplied with your set of keys that's gray and you can put it in there and lock it 
double check it for travel. Okay, starting back up here behind the front tire, you've got your diesel fill, fuel cap, and an exterior marker light. Next compartment back is storage, and it's prepped for a outside freezer if you choose to install one. It has the 120 and 12 volt outlet for it. Yep. All right, in the next compartment back, we have a manual, manually operated slide out tray. So you lift the lever to release it, pull it out. Uh, you have the inner back accessory package. And then supplied with the chassis is a uh, hose and the fittings to hook it up. When you want to close it, just simply push it back in until it latches. Next compartment back. Another pass-through storage bay. Um, we have a awning rod set in here for the um, window awnings. And then there's a ABS cover up here at the top that covers up some uh, slide out motor and uh, drive accessories. Next compartment back, we have another manually operated slide out tray. Uh, in that tray is some floor tile. This floor tile is ones that match the dye lot of your coach. So if you ever need to replace any, um, they match. Then starting here on the right, we have the inner back system. You can attach the hose here that we've seen just a minute ago in the other compartment. You can attach that. There's a manual on and off switch located there, or you can use the switch on the uh, hose itself to turn it on and off. Uh, there's warning labels uh, on the hose and here and on the port upstairs that says, make sure you have your bag put in place. <clears throat> That's up here at the top. Uh, there's a filter bag there. You just want to make sure that's in and it's been hooked up. Here you have the slide-out controller for the kitchen slide and the slide-out controller for the bedroom slide against the frame rail here. And you have a 120-volt outlet, a couple of them there um, that are full of plugs. The one goes over here to the inner back. That's the gray cord. The two with the white ends on them are for the Gerard awning controls. <clears throat> the Gerard awning controls do have a set of three buttons down here on the bottom side. It's in, out, and stop. And either one of the awnings can be operated manually from this uh, control module if the remotes do not work. The last compartment in front of the drive axle is the pegboard compartment. Uh, a lot of people use this for storage of chemicals or tools. And the one thing to know is right behind this is the black, gray, and fresh tank. So only reason I mention that is you don't want to use any screws and run into that. You'd 
may puncture your tanks. <clears throat> so you have your drive axle, your tag axle, and in between those two is your equalizer leveling jack for the rear of the coach. There's one on each side. Right here, we just have a filler panel. And then the last compartment here, we have your chassis batteries. There is a uh, fuse right here tucked away to the side, seven and a half, seven and a half amp solar panel fuse. And there is a, also a label here that shows how those batteries are wired up. Um, right here is a f chassis fuse box that can be rotated and removed. It tells you in here, uh, each fuse is labeled with a, a number, a letter and a number, and it will correspond with what's what it goes to in here. One important thing to point out in here is if your tail lights, brake lights, turn signals aren't working on your tow vehicle, this is the fuse box that those would be le uh, located in. They do have a fuse puller here that can be removed. It allows you to grab the fuses and pull them out. When you're done with it, you just want to put it back in place there, store it back in side there. You put that back in, rotate it to the right, it locks back in place. So then you have your chassis battery disconnect switches. So this one here will control the, the generator and the uh, leveling jack pump. This one here will turn the power on and off to the dash. So if this one here is turned off, you will not be able to turn the key on and start the coach. Um, it does now come with a uh, couple holes here where it can be locked to keep it from starting in case somebody's working on the engine. Right beside there, you have your air dryer filter, you have your uh, fuel filter, water separator, and then you have your fuel filter uh, for the engine there as well. Here on the back cap, starting at the top, you have your clearance lights. All right, so underneath the rear view camera, you got your third brake light, and then the camera for your rear portion of the 360 degree camera. Uh, underneath that, you have the your engine uh, access and your ladder here. To open your engine access, you need to come in here and push the tabs on the ladder, lift the ladder off, set it to the side. Then you can open this by pulling down on that latch and lifting up on this. It does have struts that will hold it open. And under here you will find your hydraulic oil right here for like the power steering system. It gives you a note here, use only AW46 hydraulic oil. Uh, you have the engine oil dipstick and the engine oil fill. Then underneath this flap here, you have your radiator uh, fluid level indicator right here. You want to always see uh, the pink looking antifreeze in that window. If you don't, you're probably going to need to add some. Uh, never open this cap when it's hot. When the engine's hot, so wait till it cools down. You can open that and fill it. 
Here you have your transmission uh, fill and dipstick right here. Uh, in addition to using the dipstick to check your transmission fluid level, you you can also use your touch pad up front like I explained earlier. Uh, once it's warm, uh, you can press this two uh, arrow buttons and it'll uh, electronically give you your transmission fluid level. This device here is an air filter uh, gauge and it will show you basically how much a vacuum is being drawn by the engine through the air filter. So as long as it's in the green portion here, you're good. When it gets up into the red portion right here where it says change filter, you'll need to have the engine air filter changed. You do want to keep this area uh, free of dirt and debris. Uh, it's the cooling for your uh, engine, your air conditioner, and your uh, and your uh, turbo. Uh, down below, we have the towing hitch. We have your seven pin bargeman plug. And then next to it here where it says tow brake, you can take this rubber cover off. And this is the air connection that you can use for your tow vehicle brakes if you have Air Force One system in your tow vehicle. <clears throat> when you're done back in this area, you just want to latch that back. Make sure it's latched securely before you walk away. And then to reinstall your ladder, just pick it up, hang it on the bottom rung here, and then lower it down into position here and press in on these clips until they re-engage in the holder mounted to the uh, coach. Brake lights, clearance lights, turn signals here in the rear. And up here on the side would be your engine air intake. Uh, there again, you want to make sure that that is kept clear, clean, and free of debris. Starting on the compartments on the driver's side, we have a storage compartment here. We also have a block heater outlet. And you can see the block heater is plugged in. So um, if you don't, if you want the block heater to work, you need to um, turn the block heater switch on on the inside of the coach. Next compartment bay forward is just more storage. The same area. You have a light here that. You can turn on and off by the switch itself on the light, or you can allow the magnetic switches here to turn it on and off uh, as you open and close the door. <clears throat> and this side here, instead of it being a filler panel like it is on the other side, it's your DEF tank access. And you can open that up, fill up your DEF, put the cap back on and turn it till it clicks. You have your tag axle, your rear jack in between the tires. Above that, you have uh, a storage area for a sewer hose. That is not a sealed compartment so that if you have anything run out of your sewer hose, it can drip down and um, 
run out. Right above the rear tag axle, you have your dryer vent protruding through the outside of the coach there. A couple of, there's your uh, emergency exit window from the outside and your window awning above that as well. <clears throat> Moving on to this compartment is your plumbing compartment. <clears throat> right here at the top, you'll see this shaft is part of your slide out system for your full wall slide out. It will turn as the slide out goes in and out. So uh, just be aware of that and don't store anything up here that would get tangled up in that. You have your water supply line. To use it, just pull it out manually. Connect it to your potable water source. Stow it into that little channel right there and make sure it stays away from the exhaust tip here. Next to that is your whole house water filter. It takes a cartridge like this. It will come with a coach new. To open this, you press the red button on the top to release any pressure that might be in the system. You, there is a wrench on the inside in the um, kitchen drawer. Allows you to get a little more leverage to open it up. You would take your filter, take the plastic off of it, light up with a little tab down there in the bottom, goes right over the top of this. You'd slide that down in there, and then you would put it back up here line it up with the top tab as well and screw it back into place. <clears throat> um, once that's in place, any water that comes into the coach through the hose here, whether it's going into the coach or into the tank, gets filtered. Uh, the next one over is the sewage rinse. This you only use when the black gate valve is open after you've dumped your tanks. So we'll talk about that in a second when we talk about dumping your tanks. Um, so the freshwater tank fill, you have manual fill and auto fill. So you're hooked up to water with your hose. You go to manual fill position it will manually fill the whole time that it's in this position. If you don't stop it, it will completely fill up and overfill, run out the overflow drain uh, underneath the coach. If you're, if you're hooked up in a park where you have city water all the time, you would leave it in this autofill position and that would supply water to your coach from the hose and would not fill the tanks unless you enable, there's a note here, uh, that the autofill must be enabled uh, in the monitor panel inside the coach. So <clears throat> we looked at that earlier in the KIB panel. Um, so you would have to uh, enable that for it to autofill the tank. But if you don't want it to autofill the tank, you leave it in this position don't enable the autofill and you'll just have water supplied from your potable water, potable water source throughout the coach. If you're using water from the water pump, from the water tank and not from a city water connection, you'd want to turn the water pump on for it to pull water out of the fresh tank and pressurize it and put it through the coach. There is an outside shower here that's um, 
available for use for rinsing off your hands or your any of your equipment here at, when you're done flushing the tanks or winterizing. So pretty simple to use. Just turn it on and off there, hot or cold. And I'm gonna leave it over here so we can look at the next thing here. Kind of get it out of the way. Okay. So this set of valves is labeled A and B. And there's instructions right here on how to winterize your coach. <clears throat> we recommend that first of all, that you would drain the low point drains uh, here and here. That's that, that will take the water out of your coach, your, your water lines. Um, and then back in the back, there's another low point drain label back there beside the, that black uh, pipe. And there's a valve back in there. You got to reach back in there and that's for your fresh tank. So you drain that also. But then you would come in here and you would take this cap off and you would put this hose into your potable antifreeze and you would open this valve and you would close this valve and that would keep the water pump from sucking water out of the fresh tank and it would force it to suck it out of this hose which would be in your antifreeze so then it would suck the antifreeze in to the water pump and then be pumped out throughout your coach uh, you want to make sure that you open each a valve on a, on your faucets like this one here you would want to open the hot and the cold uh, and get pink out of each one of them you'd want to repeat that process at each um, faucet each toilet and each appliance that has water going to it so when you're done with the Winterizing hose, you can store it back in there and when you're done with the shower, you can hang it back up there as well. <clears throat> there is a, a screen right here on the water pump that if your water pump is running and but you're not getting water pressure, it could have debris in it. You can simply unscrew that. There's a screen inside of it that can be checked and cleaned, and that can be screwed back on there. There is a little rubber gasket on there. You wanna make sure that that's in place when you put it back together. Um, <clears throat> right here on the side of the wall is a thermistor for the outside bay heat. And that, that bay heater is right here for it to work. The OASIS system must be turned on and up to temperature. So you either need to be plugged in and have both elements, AC elements turned on, or you need to have your burner turned on um, depending on how cold it is and uh, how much heat and hot water you're uh, needing. Uh, I would recommend having your burner and your both of your elements on as well. Okay, so now we're going to talk about dumping the tanks. You want to remove this plug here, remove this cap here, set it out of the way. You want to attach your four inch sewer hose right here and put it down through this hole here, run it over to your sewage drain at your park or uh, wherever it is that you dump your waste. You would want to open your black tank valve right here by pulling that towards you. Allow your black tank to dump. If you're in a position where you can wrench your black tank while that valve's open, 
it would be a good idea to hook your hose up here and rinse out your black tank. Once you're done dumping your black tank or rinsing your black tank, you would push that valve forward and uh, that would close off your black tank. At that point, you would come over here and you would pull your gray tank handle and your gray tank water would help flush out the waste and debris that is in your uh, four inch hose. Um, most of the campgrounds have a non-potable water hose at their dump stations so that you can rinse out your, your hose once you disconnect it. You would disconnect it from here, pull it down through there. You could rinse your hose out, pick it up and get, dump everything out towards the drain and then store it over here in your outside compartment above the uh, middle of the drive and tag axle. Once you're done with that, you would come back in, you would put your cap back on here and lock it back in place. You would take your excess and screw it back in place there. And then your water hose, when you're done with that, you would pull it back out of your water hatch there and then press the button over here to the side of the hose reel and that would retract your water hose. Once it's retracted, you wanna make sure that you install your plug to make sure that no debris or anything gets into your fresh water hose. Moving forward of your water bay is the electrical bay. In here, you'll find your 50 amp power cord. The 50 amp power cord reel works very similar to the water hose reel. You manually pull it out. Once you have it pulled out and plugged in, you would push it into your power cord hatch there. And then starting over here on the left hand side of the compartment at the back, you have your transfer switch. The switch chooses between shore power and generator power, and it sends the power to the fuse box inside the coach in the bathroom. There is a couple of LEDs on here that flash on this cover, as well as this power monitor right here. So this power monitor will show you what the line voltage is on leg one and leg two, or if you're plugged into a 120 service, it will, uh, it will just show you leg one power. You can use the navigation buttons here to scroll through the screens and um, if there's any faults, it, they will also di display here and you can uh, navigate through the fault screen uh, as well. Below that is your park cable connection. So this is, if you have park cable available where you're camping, you can use your own coax cable, go from their port to this port and screw the coax cable on here. Remember, if you wanna watch cable TV, you have to have the Razor TV antenna switch turned off in the, inside the coach uh, where I showed you earlier. 
Um, right above the cord reel here is one of the slide out motors for the full wall slide out. And then uh, over here to the right hand side, you have some KIB panels for your monitor system as well as <clears throat> well behind there is a plastic black plastic cover that can be removed <clears throat> it will give you access to some more breakers and fuses Velcroed in place, and there are a couple labels on the back side of it that show you uh, what the fuses and breakers go to. Um, <clears throat> there is a your battery disconnect switch here for your house power, and up at the right hand corner is your battery isolation manager which is basically a solenoid that will engage when certain parameters are met to charge both your house and chassis batteries when you're plugged in or both of them when your alternator is charging. Once again, there's a whole list of parameters that have to be met, voltages and times for that to kick in. Um, most of these fuses, are standard ATC fuses, and if they blow, you need to replace them. However, there are some that are like this, that are resettable. So if they, if they would pop, you just push back in on the reset in the center. Remember, never replace a fuse with one that's a higher value than what you've taken out. Once you're finished, you can reinstall the ABS cover. When you're done camping and you're ready to Retract your power cord, release it out of the cable hatch there, hold it firmly, and press the switch on the side of the power reel, and then just try to help guide it uh, in here so it rolls all the way up. If you get it around too many times, you may have to pull the cord to the side and go again. Once it's in, tuck it back over to the side and you can shut the door. In front of the cord reel compartment, we have the Oasis um, hydronic heating system. And on this system, this power button right here needs to be turned on. You should have a green LED light here. It's kind of hard to see out here in the sun today, but it is on. And then below that, it will tell you what's going on. If you have AC heat on, the compressor is running, or the fuel pump's running, or the comb combustion fan's running, uh, it, will, it will tell you that. These ones down at the bottom, low water, voltage, flame out, those are, would be faults, and they would be in red if there is an issue with it. If you have an issue with uh, some of those, you can, <clears throat> you can uh, try remedying the problem. Like, for instance, if you have low water, you could, you could uh, add fluid to the oasis here and add fluid to the um, reservoir tank. And then you could come back in and reset this and turn it back on and see if it'll uh, go.
if you have any any of these um, faults and the reset doesn't work to reset it and get it going, you would uh, need to take it for service. <clears throat> Over here to the side, there is a Oasis panel that has an on off switch and electric element one and two switch on it. Uh, it's we have those controls incorporated in the KIB system. Uh, if for any reason those would that would fail and you could not turn a, the Oasis on by that panel, you could come out here, take this panel, take it loose, and manually plug it in to the silver box over here to the side. And you could turn the uh, Oasis system on uh, without the KIB panel. Okay, in addition to the LEDs here, there's also LEDs here on the silver box. The green LEDs are good. Uh, it just shows you what zones or whatever would be operating uh, based on what you have turned on. And then if you have red ones, that would indicate a fault. Uh, there are some fuses inside that box that if you had a fault, it might be a, few, a blown fuse. So you can check that out. Uh, right above that, there is a, another slide out controller for this full wall slide out. Okay, in the compartment forward of the Oasis system, we have storage. It's the pass-through bay. A couple things to point out in here. Uh, right here is a valve for the uh, water in the slide out, which would be going uh, to your refrigerator and ice maker. And then also right up here on the frame rail, on the red hose, is another valve. And I mentioned it when we were in the front that there would be a shutoff valve in the compartments for the hot water spigot in the front of the coach. So that would be your shutoff valve. So anytime you're using that, the coach in cold weather, uh, you would want to turn that off there and drain it up at the front so it didn't freeze and bust since it's out in the open in a unheated compartment. Compartment forward of that is your large pass-through tray. We watched this one from the other side. It works the same way. Pick up on the latch to release it push in on the tray to close it, and it'll automatically latch when it hits the right position. And right in the middle of the frame rails in this compartment is your magnum inverter. And on the side of the magnum inverter, there is uh, a reset, some reset breakers, and you can also operate the um, inverter and charger from that position as well if something would happen to your remote panel up in the front overhead cabinet. In the compartment forward of that would be your battery compartment. These are your house batteries. And there's a tray here. You can lift up on the latch and then you also need to take the blocking pins loose. Then you can slide this tray out. These are liquid lead acid batteries and you will need to do maintenance on them. You can come up here to the top Rotate these caps. You can remove the caps and you want to make sure that you keep the water level above the plate. You also 
never want to fill them enough that there's no air gap right here at the top. Uh, because then they will, as they charge, they will boil over and you'll have acid all over the place. Uh, one thing that you want to also do in this compartment is you want to keep these battery terminals clean and uh, free of corrosion. There is a battery wiring label right over here on the side. If you ever take any of these loose to do maintenance on them and you forget how they go. Um, because this is a compartment full of lead acid batteries, they do gas off when they charge. And so therefore this is an unsealed compartment. So you may get uh, some road grime in this compartment as well. There are a couple of uh, high amp breakers over here on the side that supply power to the coach and to the inverter. On the front fender here, we have diesel fuel fill. And uh, this, this fill port goes to the same tank as on the other side. So you can fill from either side or both if you desire. Marker light, front wheel, and right behind the front wheel on both sides is your uh, leveling track for the front. In the front electrical compartment, we have spare fuses over here to the left-hand side on the door. We have our main battery lugs here from the uh, chassis. And then up here, we have the KIB panel that's uh, Newmar installs. This fuse panel supplies most of the power to the front cockpit area for the stuff that we have up there. And on each, by each fuse, it's marked on the panel itself what the fuse goes to. Uh, below that, you have your Spartan fuses, and there's four fasteners that can be turned here to take the cover off. On the back side of the cover, the fuses are labeled on the panel by a number and a letter. And then you can look on the panel here and uh, see what they go to based on that letter and number. Um, some of the things that are in here, um, besides all the dash stuff that comes with the chassis would be the power for the seats and uh, stuff like that in the cockpit area. Um, there are, most of these, once again, are replaceable fuses. And there are three right over here that are resettable breakers. So those resettable breakers, these two are for the driver and passenger seats. And this one here would be for brake control. The rest of them are labeled on the back of here and you could refer to this to find out what they go to. 
line these up and screw them back into place to protect the fuse box from anything else that you might store in here. There is one 4x4 four four steel box up here at the top that says living room on it. That would be your connection point for your floor heat for the front of the coach. So we mentioned before uh, a few things about your slide out that you want to check before you run it out. Uh, number one, you want your jacks to be retracted. Number two, you want the coach to be aired up and your air tank's full of air so that you're on the right height. And three, you want to come out here and just give a visual check on this full wall slide out to make sure that the clearance, you have clearance all the way around on your, um, your trim here. And we have plenty of clearance on it. It's looking good. It's not in a bind or anything. So we're good to go ahead and run the slide out room out. Once you're done camping and you want to run it back in, um, you would want to come back out and make sure that nothing's been put in the path of the slide out being retracted and that nothing has fallen off of trees or uh, if you're in a cold climate, no ice and snow is on the top of the slide out or the slide out cover. Um, if it is, you'd want to remove that before retracting the uh, slide out.